With some very welcome improvements due to arrive in Arena Commander in Star Citizen Patch 320, that does mean that the old Pirate Swarm will be swapped out for an updated version. So, what you're about to see may no longer exist at the time you see it. I'm Farrister, and to pay homage to the many engagements of the Pirates of Yesteryear, this video will showcase a real-time perspective of an Arena Commander Pirate Swarm cooperative battle, as at Star Citizen Patch 319 from start to finish. Arena Commander Pirate Swarm Broken Moon. A brief loading screen for me, but we do need all four players to get through the loading screen and join in. For this battle, there will be four of us to be fighting with the organisation, so thank you to Chip Thief, Viking Lord, and Frids, who may be watching from his bathtub, for joining me for this pirate swarm. At this point, we're just waiting for the last player to join and ready up. The eagle eyed amongst you will notice that this battle is taking place with the Crusader Ares Inferno, which is my personal starfighter. It is very heavy for this version of Arena Commander, and particularly for this iteration of Pirate Swarm, but is very useful against some of the larger ships. Plus, the noise of the ballistic cannon is fantastic. And there's my buddy Fritz, who has also had the same idea. Cool ship. So, first targets have spawned in, we'll boost away to try and get within range. It's probably sensible for me to point out I am an amateur pilot. I do enjoy combat in the game, mostly against NPCs, but I'm definitely not one of the top pilots of the game or anything like that. I'm pretty much just your average Joe with a HOTAS. That's probably a situation that's exacerbated somewhat by my choice of ship, which is not the most nimble and carries a fixed armament, so I have to be quite precise with the aim, especially against some of these smaller targets. Said, very satisfying when you can blast away at the AI targets, just see the damage rack up, see the sparks fly off the ship. So there are much better choices to bring for Arena Commander Pirate Swarm than the Ares Inferno. Um, some of the Starfighters, Gladius, even a Hornet actually in this game mode does really really well. And to be fair to the Ares Inferno, it does well against some of the larger ships in here, you know. When you get to fight the Constellations or the Cutlasses or even at the end the Hammerhead that spawns in, the Ares does a pretty good job of dealing with those targets. Target and this is an example in this kind of a verbal situation where having the Toby eye tracker is very helpful, just being able to look around and see what's going on around you. I am actually planning a video on the channel which talks a little bit more about the Toby Eye Tracker. I've had it for a little time, I thought it's about time that I talk about it. So look out for that one, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, that's one you might want to press that subscribe button to be notified of, as the second wave spawns in. So I usually would actually have a look around and try and find some of the closest targets, but because there are four of us and we were quite converged for that last engagement, I pretty much just picked the guy that was directly front and went for him. Of course the Inferno does also carry a wide selection of size 3 missiles and so while the main cannon was out of range, it doesn't hurt to throw a missile out at the target. And this is another advantage of the Toby Eye Tracker, is that you can just look at the target and even if they're not directly in your field of view, you can get a missile out and on target. Right. 
there as the rangers close to try and get some shots out on this pretty nippy little ship. So you can imagine here that just having something on either gimbals or something like that would be much more forgiving than the fixed weapon on quite a sluggish turn speed. That said, I love it. It's my ship. It's my Starfighter. Oh, And an unfortunate incident where it's very easy to get target focused and both myself and Frids were target focused on that little, what is it, a pirate gladius? So I had a little, little love bump. And I guess this is where my lack of experience starts to show through. Because ideally I should have been keeping an eye out and keeping my situational awareness and not let that happen. As it happens, it's made the, uh, the Ares very difficult to control. So I'm on the lookout for trying to get a repair kit and fix up the thrusters if I can. But flying is proving challenging, to say the least. I guess for better or worse, this is the um, this is the impact of the Star Citizen flight model in the detailed nature of the thrusters. Oh, there we go, taken out, taken out because it was a sitting duck. But yes, the detailed nature of the thrusters do make for some quite interesting situations where if you do have some damage to your ship, you have to be able to react and adapt to that. And quite often, you will be able to find a way to fly the ship, it just takes a lot of work. And that can be quite satisfying, especially if you're in the Persistent Universe and you find a way to get your ship back to a repair station, despite the damage thrusters. Yeah, pretty satisfying. So, here we've got the next wave, spawned in nice and close within range of the main cannon. So we'll blast away. Easy. It looks like there's a couple there that are engaging squadron mates. So, just fly in at full speed. Throw some missiles out on the way past. Wonderful off bore sight missile engagement. And then back to the main cannon. These close range fights are uh, good practice. Definitely good practice. So in this version of Pirate Swarm, a successful completion of the Pirate Swarm would give players the right to the right to purchase uh, a pirate version of the Gladius. You have to pay money for it, there's no discount, but if you're particularly into like ship skins and stylings, it was something a little bit different than the regular green gladius. Flying through the explosion of an AI ship there. I tell if that was a saber or a buccaneer. Quite difficult for me to see from the profile. Some of those slightly heavier fighters, like the medium to heavy fighters, they're good targets for the Ares, just because they're they're a little bit less nimble. Whereas like the M50 or Razor and ships like that are very challenging because they're just so quick. Interesting, um, interesting addition on this game mode for the Ares Inferno is the limited nature of the ammunition. 
So ballistic ammunition, once you fire it, it does deplete, it runs out as you go along, and so you need to replen. In the Persistent Universe, you just go to a station and pick up some new ammunition. In the Arena Commander game mode for Pirate Swarm, when you kill targets, they'll sometimes drop various buffs. So uh, extra fuel for those that are using fuel for boost and things like that. Extra ammunition, repairs and missiles. So with the ammunition running down to just under 500 rounds at this point, I know we'll be looking for some replenishment, ideally from this cutlass. There we go, and there they've dropped. So there you go, missiles and ballistics replenished. Perfect. And they do drop for the entire team, so there's a little bit of coordination sometimes about making sure that everybody can get you know, what they need, if somebody needs repairs or needs ammunition. Interestingly, what I didn't capture on this footage is the voice comms that are happening. So I always feel a bit... I don't know, I just don't think it's a cool thing to do to record voice without people consenting to that voice recording. And in this instance, I just recorded the session. We'd been out in the verse, and then at the end of that we said, oh, should we do a pirate swarm for funsies? And so we end up in this pirate swarm. I thought, oh, I'll press the record button. And actually watching it back, I think great opportunity for some gameplay footage for those that are interested in a bit of pirate swarm but unfortunately that means that I wasn't set up to record the voice comms so we are actually communicating talking to one another in the background but sadly not for this video Here we are whilst the next next wave is coming along. Flying past Chip Thief in the Avenger Titan. Wonderful little ship, little space penguin. The long range missile pot shot. And then back to the cannon. See the difficult thing with uh, particularly with the Ares series because you're fixed into firing in a straight line ahead if people are loosing missiles against you you either take the decision to evade and break off the engagement with what you're fighting or you continue putting rounds on target and just hope that the countermeasures are in the right place to be able to do something about it in that case the countermeasures did a pretty good job And that was a freelancer engaging before that was destroyed, and that sort of size of ship I think is the ideal for the Ares. Those, those medium sized ships just soak up so much damage from that cannon. turn tail to grab the target from the six. So once again I'm not a professional not a professional pilot. I'm definitely not one of the best pilots in game, so if you're thinking, oh I could do this much better, you probably could. You probably could. I fly for fly for fun and I fly for variety as well, so I'll do lots of different things in the verse. I will do some ship combat, I'll also do a lot of mining, you might have seen I've been doing some salvaging of late, a bit of cargo trading, and so for that reason I'm not really hugely invested into spending a lot of time becoming the ace pilot. And I'm okay with that, I'm alright with that. Play the game for fun, I've only got a limited amount of time. Use a lot of that to make videos for you, a fine audience, and so sadly that means I'm not quite as as good in the pilot's chair as perhaps my potential would otherwise be. 
but that's okay. So one of the other things that's slated to be improved in Arena Commander is going to be more variety for the maps. So at the moment we've got the Broken Star and the Dying Moon and come patch 320 in the Arena Commander updates we're expecting some more interesting battlegrounds and different ways to fight. And this Pirate Swarm is set to be very very different so what you're seeing is how it was as at patch 319. Actually, one of the things that I find quite interesting and I see this looking back at old videos and sometimes it comes up in the video comments from people watching the videos particularly for those that have been out for a few years they'll say oh how did you get your I don't know your heads up display looking like that and how did you pin that target so that it was on your visor and things like that and it's just a case of well that's how it used to be that's how it was this patch so who knows, perhaps when you're watching this, the game might look very different and you'll be saying, that's different. Or maybe you're watching this on the day of publishing and it looks exactly the same. I don't know. Working our way through the waves here, this is wave 6 of 10. You can see that along the top. So I mentioned I'm flying here with my organisation, well, some friends from the organisation, and um, I do remember previously for Vandal Swarm and Pirate Swarm, they've run competitions to see who can clear it, which team can clear the whole thing the quickest. I don't know that this is the quickest for me, I'm a little bit out of practice, but fun nonetheless. A little bit of formation flying with the Vanguard heavy fighter there. It's interesting seeing the target indicators, and I know people do different things with their pips. Some like to lead, some like to lag, etc. Um, whatever works for you, I suppose. But it's interesting that the hitbox for the pit comes up quite far away when you're travelling at speed with the Ares. Whereas I find the effective range is anything less than three kilometres. It might be suggesting that you can fire from beyond that. Engaging here this constellation. This sort of target is absolutely perfect for the Ares Inferno. Something with a lot of hit points that you can just keep that gun firing, blast away, strip away the, well there isn't really armour but strip away the hull. Ideal. See there we had a, a hitbox when it was at four kilometres whereas actually the effective rounds are really only landing after it got within three. And I guess there's there's a realistic element to that. Something that fires this fast is probably not the most precise, especially with this rate of fire. And so you've got probably a greater dispersion of rounds the further away from the target you are. I mean, I suppose it's all fictional anyway. It's It's not real, is it? But I think the idea is sound. The concept is sound. There's that pirate gladius, that bright red gladius. And I'm hoping that the head movement isn't too disorienting for you. Nevertheless, we'll boost away. I was taking a fair amount of damage to shields there, engaging a few targets, so 
Just boost away, disengage, then turn back in to re-engage. This is one of the elements that's quite hard to describe about the Toby Eye Tracker because when you watch this back on video, you just see head like movement, camera movement going all over the place. And sometimes it's quite difficult to see what's going on. Whereas in game, it's a totally natural movement. You look up and the game looks up and it just feels like you know exactly what's going on. You're completely in control and it's adding something useful to help you navigate the battlefield. But I don't know how well that comes across in the video. Maybe you can let me know in the video comments. Chip thief taking out that gladius, and then all four, all four of us just flying past each other in opposite directions. Nice little scene that. So this is wave eight now. So ten, ten waves. We're up to wave eight. I think the idea is that the waves get progressively more difficult as you go along. And I feel like in Vandal Swarm, you really notice that ramping difficulty. Personally, I feel like in the Pirate Swarm, at least with this loadout, you only really notice the ramp difficulty in round 10. The others are all kind of much of a muchness. I don't always know when one round is finishing and the next beginning. It's just target, destroy, target, destroy. Carry on, continue. Absolutely saturate that Connie with Contact. ballistic repeating gunfire. Beautiful. So I'm sure a better pilot could do a better job here of just staying in the blind spot because they've obviously got two turrets manned there at the front of the Connie. And so trying to position yourself almost between the nacelles at the back you can get close enough will make it very very difficult for those turrets to engage. But I'm conscious as well that the front shields of the areas are down. So I'm trying not to take too much damage at the same time. Engaging AI known as Nick Cassidy. There's an opportunity to grab some repair, so we'll try and grab that. Missed. <laughs> I tell you, when the Ares is going at speed, it can be quite difficult to precisely get the direction just right. That's some missiles off to the right. Vehicle destruction. Again, missed. Terrible piloting. Awful. Surely, surely, third time is the charm. Bring the speed down. There we go, got it. Repairs complete. So, up to wave nine now. Using the missiles to engage at range, or trying to engage at range. And then back to the cannon. Sorry to Viking Lord who 
took a couple of rounds there from the SF-7B. That's the downside with something like this. Although there is a stream of bullets, it's easy for an unintended target to cross that stream and get tickled by it. Yeah, swarmed by a couple of smaller fighters. There's the Pirate Gladius with its reddy, orangey paint scheme. Although this um, this map is one of the older maps now, it still looks still looks good. I know Arena Commander is a bit more arcadey. A little bit less well, realistic is maybe a stretch, but less immersive perhaps than the persistent universe, but it still looks great. And it's worth mentioning the performance is usually very strong as well. So whereas the persistent universe tends to suffer from all of the server side processing that goes on, the processing in Arena Commander is notably less. There are four players in here, so it's much easier. Oh, a little bump. Sorry, Fritz. Here we go, wave 10. So the idea in this wave is there are loads and loads of little Merlins that spawn in and you have to defeat the Merlins and they're incredibly fast and they're very nippy and create a challenge. They're also protected by a hammerhead that spawns in, an anti-fighter hammerhead. But, in the Ares Inferno, the Hammerhead is a much easier target to engage. And so, rather than trying to fight the Merlins, I usually look for the Hammerhead. There it is, found it. And instead, try to engage the Hammerhead. So we'll switch to our missiles. We've got four, we've got eight Vipers left, so we'll fire some of those off. Get in range. drop chaff anyway. Maybe you just see the amount of firepower that that hammerhead lays down. So I'm kind of in the balanced position here of like disengaging but also knowing that it's not the worst thing if the ship gets killed because I've got respawns left and if I can get some nice damage on that hammerhead Potentially, it ends the thing quicker. So, should be engaging the Merlins. Kill the Merlins, reinforcements arrive, the reinforcements deal with a hammerhead. Or alternatively, some rounds into it yourself. Right, shields are down here, so try and disengage again. And I think the lethality of those turrets becomes quite evident when you see just the amount of firepower going down. And I'm, I'm cool with that. I think the, the Hammerhead is a ship that is supposed to be an anti-fighter platform. It's an escort corvette, so the fact that it works well in an anti-fighter role is, I think, as designed. That said, putting a few thousand rounds of size 7 ballistics into it is um, is quite satisfying as well. And this Inferno has taken a fair bit of damage now. But it is getting rounds on target so comfortable, comfortable to keep firing I think. Shields down. There we go. It's gone. But that's fine. Dealt a lot of damage there. If you are competitive in Arena Commander, the end screen will show you how many kills you got and how much damage you did. And that hammerhead is worth a fair chunk of damage at the end. So if you are competitive, you want to be a big damage dealer, there are worse things you could pick than the Inferno.
So I just did a quick scan to find out roughly where the combat area was. You see it's over here. We'll get back in the fight. 1400 rounds left. And then just have a quick look around for the hammerhead. There it is. Bring the speed back under control Contact. and move to engage. You just see that damage there just stacking up. Target. Vehicle destroyed. Grab some ammunition. And where are the Merlins? And you'll get a very quick flavour here of why fighting the Merlins is so difficult with the Ares. There's such small targets. And the fixed weapon does not make it easy. Oh, this is the other nuance about the Inferno is the rounds, especially when you're in close, they seem to land slightly to the right of the aim pip. I think because the aim pip is presumably centred on the starfighter, whereas the weapon is on the right or starboard side of the fighter. I'm going to fly right into that asteroid. I can see it coming. See it coming. Never mind, the match is over. The match is over, there we have it, victory. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, something a little bit different. If so, please do press that like button. Let me know to make more videos like this. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.